Welcome to the Trump Breaking News Network, your daily source for up to the minute Trump news. Join us today and every day. Here's today's news. This is TBNN. Promised land, under Trump, the religious right is back, big league, and stronger than ever. It's been a heady two weeks for right wing Christian evangelicals. Never before has a president of the United States, not Reagan or either of the Bushes, delivered so much of their agenda in such short order as Donald Trump has just done. He capped off his string of early valentines to the religious right with the announcement of a Supreme Court nominee who is poised to revoke the rights of women, further tear down the wall between church and state and open wider the doors for big-moneyed interests to buy the political system they want. The right-wing press was breathless in its praise for 49-year-old Judge Neil Gorsuch, named by Trump on Tuesday night to ascend to the high court with the seat vacated by the death of Antonin Scalia, who was a ferocious opponent of reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights and significant remedial measures for ensuring civil liberties for African Americans. Yet religious-minded conservatives may come to love their new man even more than the lionized Scalia. The New York Times places Gorsuch to Scalia's right. Trump had promised he would appoint a justice who would overturn Roe v. Wade. Evidence from Gorsuch's record, such as his call for a second look at a Tenth Circuit decision that blocked the state of Utah from defunding Planned Parenthood, suggests where his sympathies are. At the very least, he can be counted on to rule in the right's favor in cases designed to create barriers to obtaining contraceptives or an abortion. During the 2016 campaign, pundits were often incredulous at the sight of religious right leaders at the side of the thrice married, biblically ignorant, philandering, ethically challenged businessman turned politician, one whose blatant and coarsely stated misogyny, whose braggadocio about sexually harassing women, whose treatment of women as property and objects of derision, could not deter them from joining his quest. After the election, Commentators puzzled over the 81% of white evangelical voters who cast their ballots for Trump, despite ample evidence of his questionable, decidedly unchristian business practices and cheating of workers and contractors. Not even the scandal of his Trump University grift kept them away from him. The attraction is now apparent, power. In fairness, it must be said that in the opening days of his presidency, Trump served up a series of executive orders and memoranda designed to please various constituencies in his coalition. The white nationalists would be getting their wall. The oil men would get their pipeline. The Islamophobes would get their Muslim ban. The Obama haters would find satisfaction in an order to purge affordable health care from the books. But the religious right would get pretty much everything it wanted, all of the above and more. For his opening gambit in the week following his inauguration, Trump not only reinstated restrictions on the kinds of health care global aid groups receiving U.S. funding are permitted to deliver to women around the world, he applied those restrictions to a far greater range of programs and organizations than the Bush version of the regulations known as the Global Gag Rule or Mexico City Policy, impacting 15 times the amount of aid dollars, by one estimate. At issue is aid to any organization that would dare to inform women that abortion is one option for ending a pregnancy. In other words, NGOs that distribute bed nets for malaria, provide childhood vaccines, support early childhood nutrition and brain development, run HIV programs, fight Ebola or Zika and much more, must now certify their compliance with the global gag rule or risk losing U.S. funds, wrote Mark Leon Goldberg at UN Dispatch. In other words, people, mostly women, will likely die because of this rule. With Trump's beefed-up version of the gag rule policy first instituted by Ronald Reagan and its timing as one of his first orders of business, the president displayed his fealty to those among the religious right who turned out the vote for him, teeing up the measure for Vice President Mike Pence to bray about from the stage of the January 23rd March for Life rally an annual exercise by Catholic organizations and schools marking the court's row decision. The vice president's address at the rally was the first time one of the two elected leaders of the executive branch ever took that stage. Anna Thomas, a teacher from Tuckahoe, New York, told USA Today, We still need as voters to hold Trump's feet to the fire, but I feel like we've got an ally there, in Pence, and that feels like a first in my lifetime. 
Pence's hardline anti-choice credentials, both during his tenure in Congress and as governor of Indiana, make him a hero to the movement. The day before the march, Cardinal Timothy Dolan appeared on the daily radio program of Breitbart News, dubbed the platform for the outright by former CEO Steve Bannon, the advocate of white nationalism who now serves as chief White House strategist. Dolan who would the next day address the March for Life, was feeling pretty cheery about the Trump administration, breezily discussing politics on a website known for promoting Islamophobia, homophobia, misogyny and attacks on African-American civil rights leaders. Not to mention its reputation as an organizing tool of the Trump campaign. Speaking of the reinstated gag rule to Breitbart editor-in-chief Alex Marlowe, Dolan framed it as a boon to Catholic relief services, falsely claiming that the Obama administration had required the aid group to dispense abortifacients. Defying scientific evidence, anti-choice advocates routinely and inaccurately describe such forms of contraception as irids and morning after pills as forms of abortion. Thanks be to God, Dolan said, now that straitjacket has been removed from the extraordinarily effective religious relief organizations and international aid. So this is looking good, Alex, and we look for even better things to come. We want to keep our eye on the appointment of the Supreme Court Justice, we want to keep our eye on the reform of the Affordable Care Act to make sure that the hideous parts of it that many people, like the bishops of the United States, have pointed to that need to be cleansed. The bishops have long protested the ACA's mandate that employer-based health care plans provide no copay prescription contraception to subscribers, and now are poised to see a new Supreme Court justice who agrees with them. Priority for Christians In their quest to overturn Roe v. Wade, the Catholic bishops long ago allied with right-wing evangelical and fundamentalist Protestants, to whom Trump reached out to in a White House interview with David Brody of the Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN, on January 25. That's the news. Join us here every day. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. See you next time. This is TBNN.